Hello everybody. Today we begin um, actual construction of the minivan camper. And um, before we start, I thought I'd take a moment to show you some measurements that I was able to obtain from this particular van. Um, the van I'm working on is a 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan. Um, I had my um, girlfriend's son install in the um, the middle bench seat there from my other van, which is a 2004 Chrysler Town & Country. They are very similar in build and size. Um, pretty much the same vehicle with just the interior being slightly different. But I went ahead and took the measurements so that anyone wanting to do this on a 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan SE will have the measurements if uh, they need it. Um, but honestly, when you do something like this, um, you'll want to measure your own vehicle instead of going by what somebody else's measurements are because there may be slight variations. And the other tip I would make is um, that, as you can see, there are parts that jut out, so the measurement um, may not account for that. Um, what I recommend doing is actually building um, inside the vehicle and and that way you're sure that the measurements are all going to be correct so with that said I'll go ahead and give you the measurements here in a moment as you can see I didn't bother cleaning the um the dirty carpet and flooring on this um 2003 uh, Grand Caravan because I don't think it's really that important um, I'm not gonna be laying directly on the um the flooring I haven't debated if I'm going to put in some um wooden um panels on the floor um, I was able to pick up like a an open package of um, flooring from Goodwill for about $15 um, I may put that in as an optional um, add-on to this van to make it look a little bit better but for now we're just going to go with the basics um, we're trying to put this whole camper together for um, about $200 um, maybe $500 maximum um, that's with all the components to turn into an actual usable camper um, let's start from the back um, so that you can see what the measurements actually are the um, you'll see that there's a, a gap here on the the back that's wider than than those console things that stick out I didn't bother measuring this um, but you, you can see that you're gonna have a little extra space here in the corner if you go with the width between this side of the van and that side of the van um, my measurements came out to approximately 49 inches. And um, so that's about the maximum width you're going to get in that, that spot right there. And keep that number in mind, 49 inches. Because the, the sheets that we're going to be using for the bed itself is actually going to be 48 inches. Which is actually a perfect fit almost. You've got one inch to play with. And what we're going to do with that one inch is actually put supporting beams and whatnot down here so that you can actually buy a pre-cut sheet from Home Depot or Lowe's and it's already the correct size. Um, that should save you some time. Um, and the other thing you'll need to note is that the height of this console right here, going up and down here, my measurements on this vehicle was about 19 inches. Um, so that's about how high it has going up and down. And if I were to extend the bed across this width here, I can actually get a bed that's wider than um, 49 inches. Matter of fact, I can get it almost to the width of the van. I'm, I'm, I didn't do that measurement. So let me go ahead and do it right now, and then I'll, I'll continue. Okay, I just did the measurement and it comes out to about 60 inches so conceivably if you just wanted a bed that went along the top uh, you know using the top of these consoles to go across you could have a bed that's roughly 60 inches wide in this minivan um, I'm not going to do that because my design has um, drawers and whatnot so you can have storage on this side of the van so what we're going to be doing is making console, uh, not a console, but a dresser unit that comes out here a little bit. So, um, and I'm going to be using pre-bought um, components mostly 
so that we save time, money, and it looks somewhat decent because I'm not very good with carpentry skill. Um, the bed itself is going to be slightly um, narrower than that, but um, it should easily sleep one person, possibly two, if, if you know you can handle sleeping in a tight space. Um, so let's move on forward. Oh, let me get my sheet here. Let's get the measurements I came up with. Okay, this this front section of the van here, the width going across from this side to the other side is is approximately um, 64 inches. So you've got a width of approximately 64 inches up front here, but note that where the console starts, it starts to um, get smaller. Now I have a bench seat here that you can see is folded down. But the reason I have the seat here is because my van has to function as a, a regular minivan to be able to carry my children when you know I have visitation with them on the weekends. Um, so this van will easily transport four, maybe five people and still function as a, um, a minivan camper. And my plan is to actually use this um, folding seat here as part of the bed. And all you have to do is flip it down and then you've got the platform or, or part of the platform for the bed. And when you're not using it, flip it back up and the van functions as a normal van again. Okay, um, because I'm planning on using the seat itself as part of the bed, the height, the vertical height of the seat is um, very important. So I took a measurement there and it comes up to a approximately 22 inches so the highest point here is about 22 inches and then we had also determined that the console back there the um the height is approximately 19 inches so that means i could work with that i can actually use that to my advantage because they're nearly the same height so if i stretch a um, some boards across this fairly flat um this will work and then the height of my um bed platform will be roughly between 19 to 22 inches. There might be a slight incline, but um, it shouldn't be noticeable and probably won't be an issue. Of course, I haven't actually um, managed to be able to test camp in this van yet, but um, previous experience tells me um, a couple inches slant is not going to make too much difference. Um, not, it's going to be minimal because um, we're going to be having cushions and whatnot, and, and that'll offset. Okay, so let's go take a look at the donor van. Um, now, normally when you're doing this kind of stuff, like I say, you, you're going to want to build directly into the van, and that way you have measurements. You don't want to pre-measure stuff and then make the components and then find out they don't fit because of all these weird nooks, the, um, the seat belt thing. Um, it, it just has a lot of curves and other stuff, so you want to build on the fly. You want to build as you go. Um, now, I'm not going to be doing that with this particular van because the components we're going to be using have already been built in a 2004 Chrysler Town & Country. So we're just going to pull those components and put them in here. When I had designed those components, I designed them specifically for the um, 2004 Town & Country. But they should work on pretty much every minivan or most minivans. Um, you may have to adjust the size of the bed width slightly or the height. But for the most part, they'll work. Oh, before I forget, if, um, if you don't need to have this bench seat here then you actually have a, a little bit more versatility than I do because you can, you know, not have the bench seat here and have the space available that you can use. And then um, to adapt this particular design to make it work without the bench seat here. Let me pause this here because I need to flip the seat up. Okay, to make it work without a bench seat here, what you can do in this space right here where this bench seat goes you can install a custom console, like an entertainment console. What I um, what I did in a previous van was I bought one of those cheap 1995 black um, TV entertainment consoles, the wooden ones, and I used that up here as a center console for entertainment. And I mounted a um, LCD uh, monitor slash TV, a microwave, and so um, some several drawers. 
Um, so it became useful because it allowed the whole backside to function as a living room until it was time to sleep. And then I just ran the boards across just like I'm going to do here with the, the seat folded down. And I had a platform for the bed uh, for sleeping. So those of you who don't have to have the van function as a minivan, um, certainly have that option where you can um, fully use the entire backspace for uh, conversion to camper. Uh, but like I said, my own conversion has to have this bench seat because I, I pick up my kids. And even if you're a, a single person, this is still not a, a bad option to have because if you are, um, you know, not requiring a huge living room space in the back, then you can set the van up as a normal van. Um, and what this means is that um, if you're trying to stealth camp, when people peer inside the van, they're going to see that it looks like a normal van unless they look in the back. And even then you say this is a part-time camper. Um, you take it out on camping every so often. And um, so I, I like the idea of having the bench seat here because um, it's useful and it makes the van look like a regular van. So we're going to continue and I'm going to take you to um, look at the components we'll be pulling from the other van. And I will give you measurements um, so that if you were building it, it will hopefully save you some time. So let's proceed. Okay, this is an interior shot of the van that we'll be pulling the components from. This is a 2003, um, no, this is a 2004 Chrysler Town & Country, Little Blue, the original Little Blue, that I had um, just finished up when um, I got rear-ended and told, you know, the, the van was totaled. So I'm going to um, be pulling the components from here and installing them into the, the 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan. I'm hoping the components fit. I'm fairly certain they'll fit because when this system was built, um, it was built to be um, very flexible. But let me go ahead and give you a tour of what actually um, is in here and what we're looking at. As you can see, I used um, these um, pre-made drawers from Walmart. Um, you can get a set of three of them for about ten, eleven dollars. So I have at least four here. So you know that I had at least two of those things. So that was about twenty, twenty-three dollars worth of purchases there for the drawers. Uh, I will be showing you how I attached them and everything. Um, also, you can see I have the other size drawers here, the smaller one, and I used two of them in here for junk and, and other stuff. So. Um, and of course, in the build, there's a little bit of gap there that you can use for storage. Um, but you can see we still have glass and stuff here from the, the rear. Right now, the rear is closed off with uh, a tarp to keep water from coming in. Um, for the bench seat itself, um, you can see I have this, these red cushions here. Um, these are lawn cushions from um, Walmart, and they run about $15 per um, set for one. And each one, as you can see, can be folded. So I bought three of them. You know, they're they're probably about, what, two, two and a half inches thick. I bought three of them, which are like the perfect fit for going across there to become a back seat. And um, so the, the back area is normally functions as a second set of seats um, that you can sit back there at. And um, when you when you put the uh, the the cushion out, it can become a bed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go try to hush the dog because it's probably hard to hear me with the dog barking. So we'll resume here in a moment. Okay, I was able to get the dog to be quiet, so um, we're gonna try to resume. But as you can see, I have three of these. They run about fifteen dollars each. So uh, with three of them, that was about forty-five dollars. So for $45, you can have cushions that look halfway decent, and you got a lot of different patterns and whatnot to choose from for your rear seat as well as the bedding. And storage is, is already handled because when it's being used as a bed, it'll obviously be laying as mattress. But when you're not using it, it's part of the seating. And, you know, it's fairly comfortable. But let me pull out these so you can see the con actual construction of the... Um, the seat. Okay. You can 
see, I built the seat using, um, um, I used laminated, I think it's laminated fur. But, um, I built this, um, using laminated fur because it's a really light wood. Uh, my original van designs used regular wood, which proved to be, um, I mean, it worked, but it was heavy. And what I wanted with this particular van was lightness. So I bought the laminated fur, which is uh, more expensive than the normal wood or plywood. And I would recommend getting the um, laminated wood um, if, if you want to try to keep your vehicle as light as possible. If not, and you're just going for as cheap as possible, you could probably save more than half, maybe, um, maybe even two-thirds of the price of this project by using plywood. I got, I think it's a, about half an inch thick uh, laminated sheets. And um, you can see here, I actually had to cut it down on the end here because they come in a width of 48 inches or so. And we obviously had measured the, um, the width in the other van and I think it was 49 inches. But because we added this um, drawer unit here, we lost some inches here. So the the van the bench seat here that I've made is is um not it is less than um less than 49 inches I haven't measured it but I'll be doing that here and giving you the figures um, keep in mind that when you're building your own depending on the width that you're working with to start off um, you'll be cutting your own measurements you know your own boards here um, at a slightly different um, width depending I mean if you, if you have a 2003 um, I mean a 2004 town and country I think this would fit perfectly now I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that because this 2004 town and country is essentially the same as a 2003 uh, Grand Caravan that the width here is going to be the same if it's not I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about the um, the, the measurements here. I may have to either buy new wood, which I don't want to do, to make a new bench seat in the back, or extend things out a little bit more somehow. So let me show you how the seat works. Um, basically this board comes off. Sorry about all that. You can see all the broken pieces of glass and stuff here. That's from um, the accident. Uh, and my little kitchen nap here got whacked, all out of whacked. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like there. But um, you can see that this piece comes off too because these all slide together to make the bed. I, I can't really show it here because um, it's, it, um, you know, it's kind of a mess. But I'll try to show you how it all works on the new vehicle. Um, but this seat here will come out and be part of the bed. Um, and of course here we're looking at the, the back view of the kitchenette which may or may not have gotten destroyed in the wreck so I may possibly have to rebuild completely here um, so let me go ahead and, and pause this out and see if I can't remove the components and then I can explain it in, in better detail later okay I, I removed the um, the bottom panel and as you can see I have what looks like a crude um, bench seat that I made back here um, this actually was a piece that came off um, uh, Hannah the Pontiac Montana my other uh, camper I decided to um, recycle it but as you can see um, I have a this is um, I think it's pine I'm not a hundred percent sure but it's um, a bit stronger uh, a bit heavier wood than the um, laminated um, fur I think those are fur that I used for the um, the bedding and the uh, the shelving and everything else, the, the dresser. But the reason we have this stronger piece of wood under here set up as a a, a, a um, bench is so that it'll support the weight of people sitting back here and you sleeping. Um, well, actually, it's, no, this won't support you when you're sleeping. Um, these, these boards that I put in here that I basically just screwed straight in and then I put a, a bracing piece of pine here to stabilize it and help hold the actual weight. And see I did the same on this side although I have a little gap here but it's not critical. Um, 
these little runner boards here that I, I bolted in here are what's going to hold up the um, the the bed slabs, the, sh the wooden sheets that were formerly um, part of the bench here, bench seat. So this isn't necessarily necessary for the sleeping, but you probably want to have something like this built for the seating. I will be um, taking measurements. So if you want to build it, um, you can do it um, off these measurements. But like I say, the uh, the width that you're going to be doing from that side to this side may vary depending on your actual vehicle. So, um, you know, be aware of that when you're making it. Um, the height could be possibly the same um, depending on, once again, where you're laying things out in your own measurements. So let's proceed to disassemble some more and I'll continue. Okay, I um, I just tried to pull out this um, bench seat thing that I've made here, but it's hitting the um, the runner boards here that I, I had um, screwed in. And I don't want to remove these yet because I need to do some measurements on the new vehicle that it's going into to line it up and make sure that they're level. So what I'm going to do is pause this video for a bit um, and probably make a, a part two because I actually have to remove all these these shelving units and whatnot, the drawers, and then disassemble this whole thing. Um, I would not, you know, normally do it from the rear here, but my rear hatch doesn't work anymore. It's been totally crushed in, and as you can see, the glass is all over the place. So we'll go ahead and, and stop this video for now and then continue. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and shoot a video of me dismantling everything. Um, although it's going to be hard because I'm the only one working the camera and trying to do the work.